All right. Ready to go? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. OU Hockey had a very good road trip up to the state of hockey as they swept the Waldorf Warriors in 4-3 and 5-0 wins up in Minnesota. With me now is head coach Peter Arvanitas. Coach, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. How was the drive up to Minnesota? It was fun. It was fun. Uh, we made that trip last year. It's a straight shot. It was fun. Uh, cool weather, 60s, 50s. It's a little different than what it was here, but uh, it was a good trip. It was a fun trip. Must be nice. The goaltenders, BCB, Gage Redman. Ha Redman had a 29 saves on 32 shots, pretty good, but then BCB came in with a shutout, so those two combined for a 9.45 save percentage and a shutout over the weekend. This goaltending since you've been here has just been so solid, but do you think you guys finally have the scoring to support those two? Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's, the, uh, that's uh, the privilege of having a 1A and a 1B. Uh, you know you're going to get the best out of them no, no matter which one plays on what night. Uh, they're both uh, great individuals, and they're both great uh, goalies, obviously. You know, they kept us in a lot of games last year. Uh, this year we're, we're trying to re reverse that little role of, you know, not only them – uh, making you know 40, 50 saves a night, and, um, and us just winning one nothing. But uh, we're trying to get them more goal support, and I think we did a pretty good job for our first weekend, and hopefully it continues. Now your first season, you split your opening series against Alabama, but this year you capture that season opening sweep. That is actually something that hasn't happened for OU hockey since 2019. How does that? How does that make you feel? Oh, it's it's good. It's good for 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 the kids, and it's good for the program. Obviously, when you when you start off on, on the on the right foot. It's uh, it's it's basically a progress of where we want to go, but it's always good to go to somebody else's house and uh, come out with two wins. Now, looking forward, it's a the home opener against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Does anything jump out to you on film about the Razorbacks this year? No, what uh, what I usually do, especially at the beginning of the year, is basically we look at what we need to work at and uh, obviously try to get to as close as perfect as we can. And now we have we have uh, two video sessions that we can look back on with the games we played up in Waldorf. And obviously there's some aspects that we did very well at, and there's other things that we might want to clean up. So that's what I look at as a coach, is making sure that we get to as close as perfect as we can for the weekend. There were quite a bit of penalty minutes up in Waldorf. I know that's kind of uh, par for the course up here in the ACHA, but is that something you guys are going to address moving forward? Yeah, discipline is always a big thing. Uh, with us, uh, it's, it's a huge it's a, it's a huge thing where we don't want to be the the people that are always in the box you know we want to be we want to be the ones that are on power plays but the penalty wise as you mentioned it was more or less even i think we had maybe a couple of more power plays but still discipline is uh one aspect of our game that we're really we're really keen on Moving back to the uh, Waldorf series, four of the 12 recruits that you brought in for this season ended up on the point sheet. Is that something that you expected heading into last weekend? Yeah, that's the expectation. But uh, but also, I don't only look at uh, uh, how many points uh, they picked up. It's, it's it's a good plus. It's knowing that, they, that the kids had a good jump to their start. But uh, everybody that played, they brought something special to, to the game for our team. So it's not not because they're not on the score sheet that they didn't play well. They I think everybody when when they played they did what they needed to do. So if if they're on the score sheet that's great. But even the players that weren't able to get on the score sheet they all played a good game and they contributed what they needed to for us to succeed. What goes into recruiting these guys? Like uh, last season you brought in Hunter Howe, for example. He was really your first big recruit that you didn't inherit from the previous yeah. administration here at OU Hockey. What, do you, what goes into that process of recruiting? Well, it, it just depends on wh where your program is at, and it just depends on the coach's philosophy and uh, basically what your team is looking for. Uh, obviously, when I came in last year, it was no secret that our, our strength was our goaltending. And obviously you built on that, and we needed to get, like I said, bigger on the back end where we can clear out some pucks that, you know, the goalies make saves out of, and we didn't want any rebounds then. So you bring in defensemen that can get that done, and then obviously bringing in kids that have offensive-minded skill and can put pucks in the net with speed, and that's what we did. 
and bringing in Howe, we were lucky enough where where he went, uh, it didn't really work out for him. Uh, he wasn't getting uh, the ice time that he was more or less talked about or promised. And uh, he came in at Christmas, and he made a big jump with us. And right now he's a big, uh, uh, a big pillar of where we're at. Now, as someone who's watched this program for the last several seasons and watching you guys last season, the two things I felt that this squad needed were size and just goal-scoring ability. And I feel that after looking at box scores and talking with everyone in the dressing room, I feel that you address those needs. But seeing that on the ice, do you feel that you address those needs? Oh, I think uh, by far we did. Uh, by far we did because that was the main thing. Is uh, Last year, we had, like I've, we've said always, we, we had a good team, but unfortunately we weren't able to put the pucks in the net. And and then the backside is I just felt that we just weren't big enough. We, we, we had the talent enough on the D side. I just felt you weren't big enough. And when you're coming down to a college season, and near the end of the year, you know, smaller players just they just tire out a little quicker than the bigger guys. So that's why that that was addressed. So right now, I think bringing in those aspects just makes our team a little more complete. And right now we're in the process of still trying to mix and match some lines where we think they're going to gel together and uh, hopefully have a good run this weekend. Now, one more thing before I uh, let you go here and we switch things up. Uh, only a little bit over half of the division has played so far, yeah. but after the first weekend of play, two teams stand alone at atop the WCHL. The UCO Broncos, who, of course, went on a deep run at Nationals again last season, and the Oklahoma Sooners. How how important is it to you guys to just stick with the Broncos this season in, in the standings? Well, it, it's good. It's good for us because, you know, that's where you want to be. <laughs> you want to have a good start. And like it, like uh, like I said, it's just two games here. There's It's a long season. And let's just see what the other games bring. But uh, obviously, you'd rather be where we're at right now than the opposite. All right. That is all we have for Coach Arvaninas. We are going to take a quick break here. But before we head out, OU Hockey is a student-led organization. And it is within the ACHA's WCHL. A tax-deductible donation can help push the organization over the top. So if you'd like to donate, you can send go on over to OUHockey.com to donate. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. Step right up. Buckle up. The only direction we're headed is... <laughs> yep, you get it. Welcome to the one and only Oklahoma. In some ways, this film is like the university itself. The one flagship university that has served the state since before there was a state. Its story is never entirely completed. Where one scoop of dirt can save thousands of lives. Where one group of biologists are connecting with world-class meteorologists. To protect the one world, one planet, that connects us all. Whoa, uh, that one literally might land on the moon. But that's fine, because what's stopping us from going up there and getting it? Go ahead. This is a team, a squad, a family, leading a collective pursuit where we share all ideas, embrace thousands of different perspectives, and require every last hand on deck. Cleared for takeoff. What else we got? More trophies than you can count? Check. Road scholars? Check. Largest research engine in the state? Check. The next generation realizing a new American dream? Okay. Actually, it's better than okay. It's O-K-L-A-H-O-M-A. -A. It's the strength of many marching under one crimson and cream flag, creating sooner magic that must be seen to be believed at the one university where one OU family makes up the one and only Oklahoma. We are about set to go here. Sticks tapping on the bench, and we're underway here at the Arctic Edge Center. And Cameron Bickford is just such a good puck carrier. When he gets a few crossovers coming out of the, out of behind his own net, look out because he he's, he's got some speed. 
Singers behind the net now. There's a Tollander holding on to it. Forehands it back behind the net. Going to be intercepted and taken back by Midland. Now turned over in front and a shot by Hollander. It's going to be deflected just wide. Wrapped around as Davison puts a big hit on. Shot from the point. Deflected and they score! He speaks too soon. <laughs> and Jack Royer, the defenseman from the point, lets one go. It caught a body in the slot and evades Brendan Colbert's and Bonn and quickly it's one nothing Midland here. Just come in onto the net, just completely unobstructed from the puck carrier. Here's Seacor with a power move walking in and he's denied out front by Nahil Vayan. And now the Sooner is going to regroup here. It's Bickford on the blue line. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. With me now is Hunter Howe. Hunter, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you were really the first big recruit that Coach Arvanitas brought in. So when he, how did he first contact you? So I actually, he contacted me through uh, Gage Redman, which is one of the goalies on our team currently. And he, uh, he called me last year, right before the first semester of the school year ended. And uh, now that there are so many new faces in here, Coach brought in 12 new players. All of a sudden, you're one of the guys who's more of a veteran presence. And with how much this team leans on you as a, as a freshman last year, your, get, your role is getting more and more as time goes on. So how does that feel for you? And how do you kind of bring along the new guys as, as the season goes? Well, yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, I think just like being a leader, um, it definitely comes with – for one, I guess it's a team sport, so just leading, um, leading everyone, and yeah. Now you guys haven't started off two and zero to start a season since 2019, a pre-COVID era, Hunter, if you can believe that. So the wins they came more as the season went on last year, but it was a bit of a tough sledding out of the gate last year for this team. So does it feel good to kind of get the monkey off your back early and just start piling up some wins? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so I wasn't here at the beginning of last year. Um, yeah, coming in and, yeah, coming out with two wins right off the bat definitely helps out a lot. Now, how are you feeling about the new additions that Coach did bring in, the the size that he's brought in? Do you guys feel like you're more well-equipped to handle the physicality of this division? Um, I think, yeah, we, we brought in a bunch of new guys. I think we have, I think, around – 11 or 12 new guys and they're not the biggest but we got a bunch of strong and uh willing people so we get it we, we make the job we get it done now going up to minnesota for two games i mean flying is one thing but you guys drove up there how did that go uh yeah bus trips aren't the most fun but uh we made it work we came out of the first our first game and you definitely tell it. We just got off the bus. The boys were looking a little sluggish. Um, but then, yeah, after the first period, we always we grind. And uh, the next day, too, was a lot better. Now, the goaltenders combined for a 9-4-5 save percentage. BCB had a shutout in game two. Do you guys, But you guys won 4-3 in game one. So just were you just feeling a bit more refreshed after a night in Minnesota for game two? Yeah, I think most definitely. Then, uh, yeah, just getting off the bus and uh, – not being able to sleep the best definitely doesn't help. And also bus legs, but yeah. But uh, going back to the goaltending real quick, BCB and Gage Redmond, as long as they've been here, those two have just been a couple of rocks for this team. Like, no matter who you guys are playing, who's who's playing in front of them, they're just always a solid pairing. So how is that for you as a defenseman, just having two solid goaltenders that can be behind you on any night? Oh, it's huge. Having people to rely on. Uh, that way, when like we do make mistakes, they're there to they're there to catch them for us. Do they know how good they are? They know how good they are. They are. <laughs> I think so. So, looking forward, how are you feeling going into this Arkansas series for the home opener? Oh, it's exciting. Um, yeah, I've never played them before. This will be my first time playing them with the team. But uh, yeah, we're, I think we're just super excited to play this weekend. Do you think that this team is better equipped to handle perhaps the more high-end teams with just players that just pot 50, 60 points in the season? No, yeah, m most definitely. I think one of the teams that we just played was not – this would be like one of the weaker teams, I think. And, uh, yeah, I think I, we look forward to actually challenging ourselves and playing a little bit harder uh, competitors. 
All right. That is all we have for Mr. Howe for now. I'm sure we'll get him back in here eventually, but we're going to be getting Nate Payne here in just a minute. And uh, OU Hockey spent the afternoon quizzing the OU student population on some program trivia. Here's some clips on that. I think there's a certain uh, backup quarterback in those clips somewhere, so that's something to look forward to. We will be right back. A top 10 matchup for the Oklahoma Sooners. We're underway against the Redbirds. It's Barone holding on to against the faceoff, but he's quickly dispossessed at center ice as the play starts very quickly here. Evett crunched to the boards. Never got home, and away go the Redbirds down the other way. They got a two-on-one if they hurry. Carrying it in is Jackson Graham. Graham going to hold on to it. Pass across the slot. Going to go just wide. That was Sean Meyer trying to fork it home on a deflection. Back door was open. Redmond moving from left to right. May have got just enough to send that wide. Over. Here's Michael Overlag walking in. His chance is going to be pushed back to the point, and they score! William Kelly let one go from the far left side. Galino makes a nice move. Toe drags across, and nobody was home. Redmond made the save, and an arm up on the official. We're going to get another call here. Redmond in the way of the Sooners again. Here's Secord with some space. He's got Evett coming down the wing. Secord scores! Alex Secord, stay hot, 14. The Sooners have tied the game. A beautiful breakout pass from Matthew Reyes to Alex Secord. All alone, big windup, big shot. We got a tie hockey game here. Twenty minutes left here today, and we're back underway for the third period. Connor Fry controls the draw and promptly dumps it into Redbirds territory. Awesome. Bigfoot intercepts the pass now, and away he goes. Left side for Secord. Secord walking and tries to center one for Prouty. It's just out of his reach. Declan Martin coming in on the spot. Now, He'll tries to clear it out of the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hockey Time in Oklahoma. Again, I am Ben Dackey. With me now is OU forward Nate Payne. Mr. Payne, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, very successful weekend for you in particular in Waldorf. Two goals, two assists. Yeah. Pretty solid weekend. Yeah, it was pretty all right. I could have done a lot better. Could have done a lot uh, better. Leading the team in points, you could have done a lot yeah, better. Yeah, there was a lot of chances we could have had as a team, not just me, but there was a lot of chances we could have scored on and we just couldn't bury, but that'll come as the year goes on. So you've been in this program for a number of years now. Does this, does the dressing room outside and the product on the ice, do they feel different so far? Yeah, of course. My first year coming in, we were at Blazers. We had that big old locker room, a bunch of seniors, and this year having like 12 new guys come in, all freshmen, and then... Me being one of the older guys now, of course, it feels different. It do, it just doesn't feel that long ago when bo both of us, really, because I'm just starting out in the broadcast program, working my way up, and you were one of the younger guys in the dressing room. Now, all of a sudden, you're one of the older faces on on, on this team. How does that feel? Uh, it feels pretty weird now. I think I'm, if not the oldest guy on the team right now, being 23. But <laughs> it just feels kind of weird. But it's fu it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun this year. Is this the best? Do you think this is the best roster that OU has put together since uh, the pandemic happened? Oh, yeah, by far. I think so. From top to bottom, we have a lot of depth this year on the front end and the back end. So do you think that as this goes on, obviously 12 new players, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve so everyone gets used to playing together. Do you think that you guys are going to pick that up more as it goes on? Yeah, every year is different. Like you get it depends on the week. Like you could be put with two new guys each week, and then but you get that you build that chemistry really fast as the year goes on, week to week. Now, as someone who's played in forwards, you played in Coach Miller's systems, you played in Coach Arvanita's system last year, and you're playing in a system this year. Playing up front, do you feel that there's a bit more of a scoring threat with the new faces he's brought in? Yeah, he brought in a lot of kids that could get points, or have been known for getting points, and then years before it was like we're just built to like not get scored on it felt like do you think that the the two goaltenders you've had have just been outstanding for years now bcb and gage redman do you think that you guys are in a better position to give them some goal support this year oh yeah 100 percent. last year we we're giving up like 30 35 shots a game which is not okay this year we're trying to keep that below 25 20 going something you said was kind of interesting you said that it was more in years past you've been playing not to get scored on how different is it this year from that just the way the systems are with the new coaching new staff we have all the new things we have going on I feel like this year's our year to like take strides and like be 
putting people on the defense instead of being the ones on the defense. What's the leadership like in the dressing room now with the players that you currently have? Uh, we got Glass, Declan, and Swearingen as cap or as assistant captains right now because uh, Bickford uh, retired pretty much. But it's been it's been good so far. They're all really good leaders. They all do their things in their own way. Everyone in the locker room listens to them and does what they want. Now, for Tristan Glass, a guy who is an Oklahoma kid coming up through the OKC Oil King system, how cool is it to have a guy who grew up playing hockey in the state as one of the leaders of the team? It's good because a lot of us aren't even from here, so it's good to have a guy that's from Oklahoma, from the area, to lead us for being the University of Oklahoma. I've had a lot of conversations with both players like you on this team and Coach Arvanitas, and something that he said while I was interviewing him last season has really stuck with me that you guys aren't a D1 program, mm -hmm. but you conduct yourselves as a D1 team. So you practice well, you eat well, you travel well. What does that mean for you to be able to do that at this point in your hockey career? It's good because before I came to Oklahoma, I was thinking about going either D3 or low end D1, but I just wanted to go somewhere that felt like a Division One program, even though it wasn't technically. But it's just good to have all the staff chipping in, like this new locker room, the rink, all the stuff we got going on behind the scenes is awesome. So you went and you ended up going to one of the premier flagship universities in the country to go play D1 club hockey instead of going to a smaller school that plays D3. What do you think the more some more advantages are that you have, both academically and on the ice that you have here that you wouldn't have had in a D3 level? At the D3 level, it's just a small school. Like, all I'd be doing is hockey, and, like, everything would be around hockey. I'd only be hanging out with hockey kids pretty much, and obviously the schools are way smaller being a D3 school. But here I could go join a fraternity. I could just go do – I could go to football games. I could go to baseball games, all that, and then still play hockey and not have it be at a very competitive level. What would – maybe people who don't, they know the brand that you wear on your chest for games, but maybe what do, what do people not know about you, the person, before you go out on the ice? Uh, I got a bunch of weird superstitions before I go out and play. Like I warm up with like no shoes on. I just go regular shirt. I go my jock, and then I just go no shoes, just socks. But I do a bunch of weird stuff, but that's just one of them. <laughs> Is it – are you how proud of you, how proud do you feel when you're getting ready to go out for a game and you get to pull the interlocking OU over your head and onto your chest? How does how does that make you feel? It feels good. Like every game I play for the logo on the front, like I go out play the same way every game, just hard, physical, but yeah, it feels great. Do you think that this team is ready to take a big leap in terms of where they're going to be in the standings at the end of the season? Yeah, but by the where we were last year at this point to where we are now, it's way different. We're way more ahead of where we were last year, and I think we're just going to keep taking steps towards that goal. I have way too much free time on my hands, so I was going through the standings on the ACHA website, and I noticed that two teams stand alone atop the WCHL. UCO, right behind them are you guys. Both, both teams have six points. I think they have a better goal differential. I think that's what the tiebreaker is, but... You guys are tied with the big bad Broncos, albeit it is very early, but that's got to feel good for you guys in this room. Yeah, two games in, we're feeling good so far, morale's high, but we're looking, we're just looking to keep that going just one game at a time. Now, looking forward to this Arkansas series that's coming up, the Razorbacks are a foe that you guys have tangled with before. What do you, what do you guys most worry about, and what are you planning for uh, in practice, and just what are you, what are you guys most concerned about heading into that series? I wouldn't say we're so concerned about anything, but we're just trying to work on taking steps from last weekend, the mistakes we made, just fixing those mistakes, and then just fi just keep going and fixing them every single weekend. What are what are those mistakes? Like, say, we weren't getting pucks out one game. That's why Waldorf came back on us a little bit. And then we made some turnovers and some mistakes, and then they capitalized. We just got to fix those turnovers. What do you think is the number one thing that this team is absolutely 100% better at than the team from last season? Just, I'd say speed. We brought a bunch of new kids in, fresh legs, come from good programs that are really fast and like to fly, good with the puck, and we just we get we get into way more positions to score this year than last year. 
Now, this is uh, way down the road, but the Bedlam on Ice series, just uh, want to talk about that really quick. The series that you guys had with Oklahoma State last year, that was a blast for us as broadcasters because they had us up in the press box. It was just a very cool experience. But for you guys playing where the Tulsa Oilers practice, or where the Tulsa Oilers play, rather, at the BOK Center, how did that feel for you guys? Uh, it was it was kind of cool. It was a little weird. I wasn't really used to playing in a rink that big. I don't think anyone was, but it's always cool to get into a rink that big and play a game there against a rival, big rival. Now, with you guys, UCO, who's been a national power for years now, and Oklahoma State getting their club off the ground, you guys are just kind of overseeing this era that is being brought in of hockey in Oklahoma. So how does that feel to be a part of? It's awesome. Like, all these, all these teams are coming up out of nowhere. There's even OSU's program is pretty new, right? So they're coming in. They got UCO has been a big program for a while, even though they're a smaller school. But then there's us, which is a really big school, and we've been a good program for a while, and it's always fun. Now, for I, I've i always loved the fan presence at games. Last year at Arctic was much better than I was expecting. But there is defi- we definitely wanted to get, see more students at these OU hockey games. So how do you get OU students in the door at Arctic this weekend? We just got to put the word out, just go on campus, maybe wear, go to go out to some events, go to like some fraternities, sororities, just inform as many people as possible to come out to games. All right. And that is all we have for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching Hockey Time in Oklahoma. Until next time, I'm Ben Dackey. With me is Nate Payne, Caleb Shaw on the Mixer Deck. Until next time, it's Hockey Time in Oklahoma. Baker puts the man down at center rise. Big hit in 24. Score! He's got saved by Redmond. Rebound. He got that one too. And they come down the wing. Secret scores! Big shot saved made by Thomas and Bond. Front shot saved by Redmond. He'll hang on. Down at center, right?